You won't know this, but this year I had the chance to drive an Alfa Romeo 4C for almost four months. One of my favorite cars ever. I wanted to make a video about it, but it was trash, didn't like the video. So instead, today I'm gonna to do a video on 10 other exotic cars you can buy for the same price as a 4C, so under 50 grand, that look expensive, look good, and are just excellent little exotics for the money. If you like this kind of content, do hit the like button, as many likes as you can so that I can actually buy myself a 4C very soon. Subscribe as well if you're new without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> Let's get started with a Bond car, the Aston Martin Vanquish, driven by Pierce Brosnan's rendition of James Bond in Die Another Day, where it was named the third best Bond car of all time. It comes with a 5.9 litre V12 engine, producing 460 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.8 seconds, so yes, it's the slowest car on the list, but it's also the second oldest, so not bad performance for the age. It was Aston's first flagship car for the modern era, and took a lot of inspiration from the DB4 GT Zagato, hence its stunning looks, which made it a completely different vibe to the DB7 which preceded it. The chassis was built in collaboration with Lotus meaning it was ultra light but still strong with a carbon fibre backbone and aluminium composite throughout pretty cool. These cost around £43,000 at the bottom end and 50 grand will get you a 2001 model with 50,000 miles on it. Serious problems are rare on these but coil packs are the common problem to be aware of. Last year I made a couple of videos on the Porsche Cayman 981 generation, one with the S and one with the non-S and I really rated the car highly. But to take another step up on top of the S, you could instead go for this, the 981 GTS, which comes with a 3.4 litre flat 6 engine, making 335 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.6 seconds. Compared to the S, it was slightly more powerful and came with optional passive sports suspension, which was lower and more focused on handling. If anything, the GTS was more like a 987 Cayman R or S Sport, where the GT4 was a step up on top of that altogether. But most noticeably, the exterior got a makeover with the new GTS specific body kit that ended up being slightly over three centimeters longer than other versions of the car but in my opinion also way cooler. £39,000 will get you into one of these and 50 grand is enough for a 2016 model with 20k on the clock. Generally these 981s are very reliable which is great news though maintenance of PDK boxes is very important. The Lexus LC500 is one of the best looking recent cars from the brand with its 5 litre V8 engine that makes 470 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.5 seconds which means it has the performance to go with those nice aesthetics. This is a proper Grand Tourer with LC literally standing for luxury coupe. It was built in the same factory by the same group of Takumi master engineers as the hallowed LFA and you can definitely see some similarities that the LC has that more modern Lexus design language about it. The interior too is a lovely place to be, super luxurious with great materials which helps you to rest assured that you've also got a reliable car for soaking up the miles on a long Grand Tour. It comes as a convertible too but sadly you won't get one in our price range, though I do think the coupe looks better anyway. These are quite expensive still, starting at around £48,000, with 50 grand getting you a 2017 model with 30k on the clock. Though the Alpine F1 team might not be having the best time right now, they do make some very cool cars, with the A110 being their only real offering for quite a long time. It competes with cars like the Alpha 4C and Lotus Elise, thanks to its 1.8 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine, which makes 248 brake horsepower, the lowest on this list, but it'll still get to 60 in 4.4 seconds. The car revived the nameplate of the classic sports car which was known for its success in the early days of the World Rally Championship. It does also look like a modern version of that car and though those looks have divided opinions in some cases, I think these always turn heads out on the roads here in the UK and the interiors are also so good looking when compared with other sportier cars in the Renault domain. These start at around £38,000 while 50 grand gets you a 2021 model with 10k on it. The Gatrag Auto gearbox has been known to have problems and the suspension has has had questions around longevity. One of BMW's best successes in the past 10 years was definitely this, the i8, which came with a small 1.5 litre turbocharged inline 3 engine combined with electric power to make 356 brake horsepower, which would get it to 60 in 4.3 seconds. This car absolutely dominated its class as a plug-in hybrid electric sports car, nothing has come close to it in terms of sales. It only ended production in 2020 after also getting a convertible model into the lineup after a six year total production. The electric motor means that it has by far the best miles per gallon on this list, even better if you get yourself a post 2018 model when the batteries increased in capacity. And of course it looks stunning based on the M1 homage concept car 
with the aggressive lines and butterfly doors being key features. This is the cheapest car on the list as they have recently dropped below 30 grand with 50k getting you into a 2018 model with pretty low mileage. It's actually been pretty reliable too. Some battery related issues have been reported, but in general, it's very good. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. And let me know in the comments down below, you've got 50,000 pounds to spend. What car are you buying? The Supra was always known as a car to modify into being a supercar killer in earlier generations, but the recent revival of the nameplate has some exotic qualities of its own. These come with a 3 liter turbocharged inline six engine, which makes 335 brake horsepower, taking them to 60 in 4.2 seconds. You'll probably already know that this was built alongside BMW, with much of it having the same kit as the Z4, all the way down to the infotainment software. And looks wise, it does hark back to the fourth gen to some degree, but is more similar to the FT1 concept car, which is absolutely stunning. Toyota making this with BMW should hopefully be a really good thing in the longer term, as off the back of this, we've seen more GRs turn up, and maybe BMW will have taken a leaf out of Toyota's reliability record. These run you around 30 grand at the bottom end, while 50 grand gets you into a 2022 model with 3K on it. Taking fourth on the list, we have the Ferrari 612 Scaglietti, a proper front engines Grand Tour from the Scuderia, which comes with a 5.7 litre V12 engine, making 540 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.1 seconds, pretty quick, especially when you compare it to all the other newer cars on this list. It's an interesting Ferrari in that it's got four seats, which of course isn't the norm, which is why these have dipped down to a more affordable price range than many other Ferraris, the same story for other cars like the FF, which this was the predecessor to. Its chassis was the base of the 599 GTB, the engine was shared with the 575, and the F1 gearbox is a refined version of the one found in the 360 Modena, though it of course also came as a manual. As it has the Ferrari badge, it is the most expensive car on the list, starting at our 50k limit, which will get a 2005 model around 60k on it. These are better when driven and maintained consistently, though the early F1 boxes were known for sensor issues. Just know, keeping up the maintenance schedule on these can be very pricey. We have three British cars occupying the top three spots in this video, starting with the Jaguar F-Type R, which comes with a 5 liter supercharged V8 engine, which makes 542 brake horsepower the most on this list, taking it to 60 in 4 seconds. The F-Type could be a perfect cheap exotic car, given it's mad fast, has great grand touring qualities, a reasonably sized boot, and looks good. I literally thought about whether this should be my next car, but then realised insurance prices on these are absolutely ridiculous for me, double or triple what I'd pay for most of the other cars on this list. Ignoring that though, the R does come looking a bit more aggressive with its trim around the bumpers and sounds absolutely ridiculous, just a step down from the SVR. The start at around £30,000 and 50 grand will get you into a 2017 model with 15k on it. Leaking diffs are known, but the engine is typically pretty good when maintained well. Just ahead of the F-Type, we have this, the Lotus Exige S, one of my personal favourite cars on this list, in part thanks to its Toyota 3.5 litre supercharged V6 engine, which makes 345 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 3.5 seconds made possible by it being a lightweight, more track focused exotic car. This is the Series 3 Exige, which properly modernised the car over the S2, making it bigger without losing the lightness and dynamics that made the previous two generations so special. The interior remains one of my favourite parts of the car, they're hard to get into with the sills being absolutely massive, but once you are in, you're blessed with a stripped out, basic interior, built for people like me who like to drive fast. It's the opposite of the F-Type in terms of practicality, but if that doesn't phase you, then you'll probably like me and going to love one of these. These start at around £41,000 with 50 grand being enough for a 2017 model with around 17k on it. That engine is good on reliability coming from Toyota but Lotus parts do cost quite a lot in general to fix or replace. Taking the top spot in this video is the oldest car on the list, the TVR Tuscan which comes with a 4 litre inline 6 engine that makes 440 brake horsepower which will get to 60 in 3.9 seconds. TVR just do one thing really well, make fast cars, specifically fast, as yes that engine is not known for reliability at all, and getting parts these can be more difficult than you would like, but when it's running it will smoke most things its age, and as you can see from this video, a lot of newer stuff as well. The design of the Tuscan is pretty timeless, as it's a rarer car than many of the other cars, it's done very well to remain pretty modern looking despite the fact that it came to the market in 1999, though the interior is still pretty eccentric in line with other TVRs. These run around £28,000 at the bottom end, with 50 grand being more than enough for a 2005 model with 40k on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then do hit the like button and subscribe as well. If you're new, huge thanks to the page for their support and to you guys as well for watching. And if you want to see 10 other exotic cars for the same price range, click up here and subscribe down here.